So, you want to know how to become an artist? Well, that's kind of a big question, isn't it? I mean, how do you know when you've really made it? Is it after you've put up murals all over the world? Check. Collaborated with major artists? Check. Designed a global clothing line? Check, check and check. Well, if that's what it means to be an artist, then I've ticked a lot of those boxes. But before you learn how I did any of that, let me ask you this. Who are you? I mean, who are you really? Without saying what you do or where you're from, who are you? To answer that question, I think it's helpful to go back to the beginning. For me, that story begins in the late 90s in a part of London called Thames Mead. The place where we're standing now. You see, Thames Mead was built in the late 1960s to help provide more housing after World War II. Homes, schools and parklands linked by traffic-free pathways and walks. The pedestrian will have an environment entirely of his own. So you can see you have these walkways that go from one end to the other and you know you never really have to go down on the ground so as a kid that was really great fun but you see it's a lot of concrete and it's really quite harsh education recreation sports and children's play all vital needs of a growing healthy modern community are being built into the plan a town of the future grafted into the london already there well that's not how it turned out And just like a lot of idealistic housing projects from back then, it didn't turn into this utopian place with lots of different people from different backgrounds all living happily ever after together. I don't know, it was just all very... It was all quite of generically the same things. It was shell suits. When they come out, everybody wore shell suits. Then night kai trainers, everybody wore night kai trainers. You know, you didn't have people that embraced different styles. Everybody looked the same. Not five minutes later, some dirty person will come along and drop yeah. pill, yeah. everything. Yeah. Dirty STs, everything you can think of on the floor. It's not the kids, it's some of the people. This is a picture of me and my brothers and sisters. There I am, the only brown-skinned girl with an afro in what felt like a very blonde-haired and blue-eyed world. And no, I'm not adopted or anything like that. I just have a different dad. But from the start, I didn't fit into the mainstream. Just some people just don't get the fact that, like, different dads, you know, like, don't understand it. <laughs> What does it mean to you if I say, like, father figure or father figures? Never really had one. Never really had a father figure. Um, I've just got really no good memories of any of the blokes that were in our life. Home-wise, oh, it was a bit tough. Um, and obviously mum with Colin. <laughs> God. And why do you think Colin used to do those things? Because he was an alcoholic, constantly, every day. As soon as he got home to the time he went to bed. Because it just it, it weren't very nice to children. Just awful. I hate him. What do you remember about me as a as a kid? You used to keep yourself in your bedroom doing your artwork. Um, I remember being a little guinea pig. Why do you think I was always in my room? because you didn't like the, the way the family was going, I think, and you got a head on your shoulder. I think one time he just wanted to kill you or kill mum and drive into a wall. Yeah, I remember that. I think after you've been tormented by Colin, I think kind of went a bit in your shell. So for me, growing up in that environment, there was a real sense of helplessness, a real sense of frustration. I was an outsider in Thamesmead, as an outsider in London. But what I did know is that drawing really helped me. That all started with my bedroom door. On the back of it, I have the words, who are you, who are you, who are you? And I did this, so whenever I leave my bedroom, I'm asking myself, am I being me? Am I being myself? Am I being true? 
What was I missing out on? What was I not being exposed to? Why was I not like anyone else? These were the emotions. These were the feelings that created my first character. Meet Hangman. He was quite literally a hanged man or a hanged robot. And in many ways, I saw myself in Hangman, stuck in a system in a rather mechanical way with life and abundance, just out of reach. Um, Hangman used to be a businessman. He used to carry a briefcase and he was very, very unhappy and decided to cut the loose and get out of the job, get out of this unhappy situation, get rid of the bag, the, the briefcase, and start to wander. All right, so you got a bit of the picture, a brown girl with an afro in a blonde, blue-eyed world, fighting against the system, one drawing at a time. Looking back now, it sounds very artistic, but think back to when you were 13. It didn't make me very cool. It made me weird. It made me an outsider. So in this really profound way, and unknowingly at the time, it was my differences that allowed me to become uniquely me. It was my superpower. Me, Heartless, all proud of y'all. So proud. It's like I walk down the street and I'm wearing your trainers and people say, oh, where'd you get them? And it's like, oh, my sister's done it. No, nah, they don't believe me. And then I have to show them your name on the tongue. <laughs> Now Hangman is on this awesome path of finding out who he really is and, and doesn't, you know, want to live up to other people's expectations or images of what he should be. Hangman's on, totally on his own path now and, and is much happier than he would ever, ever be.